Hey everybody, welcome to our channel Living in Richmond, Virginia, where we show you exactly what it's like to live, work, eat, and play right here in RVA. In this video, I'm going to take you inside of five houses that were for sale in the city of Richmond. You'll get to see a wide range of homes, including a rancher, a row home, a full-blown renovation, a four-square, and at the end, you'll get to see a really unique new construction modern home that we sold. Plus, you're sure to get a laugh because we all got dressed up for their May the 4th closing. If this is your first time to our channel, welcome. I'm Taylor Jefferson, and my wife Sarah and I own and operate Jefferson Grove Real Estate, and we are your Richmond relocation experts. We've helped families from all over the world relocate to Richmond, and if you're thinking about doing the same, be sure to download our free and updated Richmond Relocation Guide. It's full of useful information all about Richmond and the surrounding areas. The link is on our banner image, on our website, and in the comments below. Our channel is your one-stop shop for all things RVA. We have over 100 videos featuring neighborhood tours, fun things to do around Richmond, relocation tips, pros and cons list, and lots more coming up. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on our future videos. Now, with all that said, let's dive in. So I wanna start off by letting you know that these homes are no longer for sale, and three of them have already closed, and the other two are still pending. But what this video will be is a great exercise in setting the right expectations for what types of homes you'll find in the city of Richmond, the prices you can expect to pay, and the level of competition within the city's real estate market. I'm currently working on a video where I will give you a tour and a breakdown with tons of information about the different parts of the city of Richmond, including the Fan and Museum District, Forest Hill, the West End, Northside, and Church Hill. And while they all have similarities, they also have some pretty big differences too. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss that one when it debuts. Now, having said that, let's start looking at some houses. So I'm gonna start with the lowest priced home and work my way up from there. First up is this four square in the north side area of the city on Avondale Avenue. This home was listed at $450,000 and featured almost 1,800 square feet with four beds and two full bathrooms. It also had a super cute backyard with a detached garage. Stepping inside, there was a formal living room, dining room, and bonus flex space on the first floor, along with a full bathroom, which didn't make the most sense given that the rest of the bedrooms were all upstairs. Also upstairs was a second floor balcony overlooking the backyard, which was kind of cool to have. So, while I was editing this video, this house went from pending to sold, and I can't believe it, but it sold for more than $150,000 above asking, with a final price of $602,500, which still has my jaw on the floor. Up next is a ranch-style home in the Westover Hills area. The selling feature of this home was its location being within walking distance to Buttermilk Trail and to the James River. It was a beautiful area, but in my opinion, the house itself was okay at best. It was listed at $475,000 and featured three beds and two full baths, a kitchenette, and just under 2,200 square feet, but almost half of that square footage was from the finished basement. The kitchen was nice, but the rest of the interior needed some cosmetic updating and touch-ups. Despite my thoughts on it, it sold for over $75,000 above asking price, with a final sales price of $553,000. Tell me, would you have paid over half a million for this one?
Continuing our journey north in price, this next home is a phenomenal example of the types of row homes you can expect to find around the fan and the museum district. This was another one with a stellar location, walkable to Bird Park, Carytown, Maymont Park, and so much more. This one really did have a lot going for it, which is why I was listed at $630,000. Featuring a little over 2,000 square feet with four beds, two and a half bathrooms, and a kind of half-finished, half-not-finished basement. The kitchen was nice and updated, but the one thing I'll say is the layout upstairs is a little odd, with both the front set of bedrooms and back set of bedrooms separated only by a door between them. That said, the house was built in 1919, and floor plan layouts have changed a little bit in the past 104 years. So, expect to see some wonky configurations when house hunting in the city. This one is still pending, but it went under contract after four days on market, and I am certain they received multiple offers. Want to see what a few hundred thousand dollars more will buy you? This home is located in the west end of the city, or what I call the suburbs of the city. It was listed at $10 below $850,000 and was a very nice renovation. It had 2,522 finished square feet and an unfinished basement with only three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms, a really nice kitchen, and the primary bathroom was great as well. On the second floor, there was a covered balcony overlooking the rear yard, and this one also had a detached garage. I didn't really care for the finished third floor all that much, but at least it was there for whatever purpose you could find for it. This one didn't go too nutty after multiple offers and landed at a final sales price of $875,000.
Now, this last one is a bit of a unicorn, because not only is it brand new construction in the city, but it's also a modern home. And Sarah and I were so excited to be a part of this sale, as were our buyers. They actually moved closing by one day so that they could close on May 4th, and they bought me an inflatable Jabba the Hutt costume, which I gladly donned. Suffice it to say, we had a blast working with them. Now, the location of this home is both a pro and a con, because you can walk to Carytown in no time flat from the house, but there's a lot of road noise outside due to its specific location. That said, you don't move to the city for peace and quiet, and our buyers loved it. It was listed at $845,000 and featured 2,200 square feet with three beds and three full bathrooms, plus a covered rear porch and a second floor balcony, and a really nice detached garage slash workshop. Obviously being brand new, it was completely moving ready and simply stunning. We were able to get it without competing against anyone else because we struck hard and fast, and our buyers even got some seller paid closing costs too. So, there you have it. Five different types of homes within the city, and pretty good examples of what to find and where. Be prepared that when you house hunt in the city, you'll come across all different types of flavors, ranging from brand new construction to original homes with modest updates and everything else in between. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like it, leave me a comment and let me know. If you're thinking about moving to Richmond, be sure to hit me up. I have the knowledge and experience to help make your move as stress-free and easy as possible. I appreciate you being here with me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.